All right, hey everybody, welcome to episode 40 of Stop and Give Me 20 podcast, 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Renna. You can get the show notes at stop20podcast.com. That's stop20podcast.com. Make sure you go to iTunes. I say it all the time. Subscribe to the show. Leave us a rating and a review. We really need the help. All right, for today's episode, I have on Robert Yang, a certified nutritionist, strength and conditioning specialist. He's a Czech Level 4 practitioner and an advisory board member with Titleist Performance Institute. He specializes in nutrition, sports performance, and lifestyle coaching. Rob, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks, Anthony, for having me on. Always a pleasure to be on. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm interested in this next question because I just saw a, a throwback Thursday video of you on a bodybuilding stage, which I really, I can't <laughs> believe I never even knew that. But anyway, Rob, what's your story? Yeah, it. you know, that was bodybuilding. I think that was like uh, somewhere in college. But, um, you know, I can still vividly remember just my spark in just, fitness and just the body itself when I was I probably I had to been probably around sixth grade or seventh grade and you know my dad had some weights laying around the house and you know they were the typical you know like two three pound weights and things of that sort and and I just I don't know I, I gravitate towards them I said you know dad I want to get you know a weightlifting set you know the Joe Weider <laughs> weightlifting set with the little leg extension the leg curl you know and the bench incline bench and uh, he said, no, you got, you cannot get that. You got to work with these first. So I'm, you know, I'm working with the three pound weights and everything else. And I don't remember what I was doing, but I was using them. And then, so finally he said, okay, well, you know, I'll get you the weight set. And um, so that, that really started my, my curiosity and just my start in fitness. And it just continued to grow after that. So Obviously, we were all involved in sports, so I was heavily involved in football and track and field, basketball, baseball, every every traditional sport. Um, and um, you know, once I got into really the eighth grade, um, I remember you know we would have this free period, and so at my particular school, it was um, it was going you know from junior high all the way to high school, and so um, I just finished all my homework. I just I, I just in my head, I thought, okay, if I finish all my homework, I can ask my teacher, can I go down to the to the gym? Wow. And so that was my thing. I was just finish all my homework. And I say, I finished my homework. You know, I've got 30 minutes. Can I go to the gym? And so I would go down there and there'd be all the high school kids, all the football players, um, you know, pump wind iron. And, and, uh, I just wanted to get in there and, um, <laughs> and work out. It was just something that I wanted to do. I just had this sort of curiosity and uh, yeah, obviously, I want to improve my performance, get faster, bigger, stronger for football and uh, track and field. Um, but that was really kind of like my spark and yeah. my interest in, you know, weightlifting, you know. What was the motivation, though? Like when you saw your dad's weights, were you just trying to say, yeah, I want to I want to look better right right away? Or you just were just like, I, what are these and I want to get stronger or like what what like what kind of drew you to it, though? Yeah, you know, it. It definitely, I think, was I, I would watch my dad work out, and and you know my father was um, in Korea. He was um, uh, a boxer, and so it was at the level. And he doesn't talk about it much to me, but my uncles would tell me that it was at the level of like Golden Gloves. You know, wow. Um, the interesting thing about my father was that he had really bad eyesight. So basically, you know, he would get in fights all the time. This is in, you know at the time before the war and things like that, the Korea War. And and I remember he would tell me he'd have glasses, but he'd have um, you know, um, rope between the, um, the glasses and the actual, uh, the, uh, I guess the earbud that goes around your ear because, you know, he'd break glasses every time. So he made this like mock, oh. <laughs> I guess fighting glasses. But anyways, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I gravitate towards that. I wanted to, to, to look better. And then, you know, I started playing sports. So I really wanted to increase my performance. I knew something like if I did this, I could possibly improve the way I played and to become faster at what I did. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, you know, I, you know, at that time, I mean, we don't, we didn't have the internet. We don't have all these different things. Yeah. So, 
you know, at the time, the only thing you're looking at is what is provided by the high school, you know, or what they have. And um, I just, when, you know, we, we had talked about this and looked at um, some of the things we we're going to talk about, and it jogged my memory of, um, you know, back in the day where, um, you know, people wanted to improve, improve their vertical jump and the back of the muscle magazines. Remember they had those vertical jump shoes? Oh, where, yeah. Right? It, it, it basically, you you had this huge platform on the on the ball, the metatarsals, right? So you can never, um, you know, allow your heel to to basically hit the floor. So basically, you're just basically in plantar flexion the whole time, you know. And they had all these workouts, and they said, "Oh yeah, improve your vertical by six to eight inches." And of course, being an idiot at the time, I I remember literally, I I went and I ran a mile in those things. Oh my god! Because I thought more is better, right? <laughs> So I remember I did that and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be like dunking on people and stuff like that. And literally, I could not walk for a week. Oh my right? God. And, um, you know, just stuff like that. And that, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff I did, it just, you know, it, everything is experimentation. Um, and I always use my body to say, okay, well, someone said this works. So let's see if it works. And so I try my, on my body and the same thing goes with nutrition and all the other things and so it continued to just basically grow um from there and sometimes doing stupid things like that you know yeah um, and so that was pretty much uh my spark and then obviously after i finished um playing football and other sports that's when i started getting to bodybuilding and powerlifting and um it, it just kind of you know grew from there interesting what about that person growing up i mean obviously your dad was a boxer it sounds like you had a good relationship with your uncles um who who was the person that kind of influenced you the most growing up i would say um uh, it would be my father um you know i my father was very stoic um same with my grandfather and my grandfather and my grandmother would come live with us for six months at a time and then go to korea and come back and and uh i didn't realize it um as much like I, I wasn't a kid going, Oh, like my dad, like he's, you know, yeah. he's like my idol and he's just my mentor. You know, I didn't think about that as growing up as a kid. I was just like, Oh man, my dad's like, okay, go, go pull weeds, you know, <laughs> go, go <laughs> for the lawn or, you know, come to the dry cleaners. You got to sweep up and, and, you know, do all these other things. It's 95 degrees in the, in the shop, you know, and I, I didn't think about those things, you know, growing up as a kid, but looking back, um, you know, there's some, some key things he he's always told me growing up as a kid and um you know for me he was basically my hero in terms of you know what he taught me and and it wasn't so much in words because he was a, a man of little words but it was always by action and so um whether it was always being at work and all these other things that you know sometimes we complain about our parents or whatever but um, you know, my sister and I we were lactic kids, you know, it's just like, you know, my parents went to work and, um, and we were just, uh, alone, but, um, his love was shown through what he did. And, you know, one thing that always stuck with me that I always tell my boys is, you know, he always told me, he said, he says, son, you know, if you want to do anything in life, if you have a burning desire, burning desire deep in your heart, whatever you want to do, burning desire, you can do anything. And so I didn't think much of it at the time, but that was just ingrained in my head constantly. And so, you know, I had a burning desire to, you know, get stronger, um, you know, for the season. Or, you know, one quick example is, um, you know, when playing football, you play for, you know, so many uh, weeks at a time. And I always tend to lose like 15 pounds in a season. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's not a good thing. So I said my senior year, screw it. I'm not going to lose weight. So literally I was, you know, wake up eating 12 a whites in the morning with <laughs> tortilla protein shakes during the day, tuna bananas before work, uh, the practice tuna banana after workout. And I, I just said, I'm just going to eat a ton of food and I'm not going to lose weight. And I didn't lose weight that season. I actually maintained my weight the whole season. And, uh, what later on that season, someone asked me a nutritionist, Hey, you know, you're eating a lot of food. Let me analyze it. So they analyze it, and he goes, do you know how much food you're eating? I'm like, no. He goes, you're eating 6,000 6, calories a day. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> and I just, you know, and it goes back to what my father told me, you know, have a burning desire for what you want to do. And 
so it just that really has kind of taken me far in my career and what I'm doing um, currently at this point. So awesome. uh, really, he is the huge influence on my life. Nice. What about now? Who out there now that's kind of doing some great things, you know, uh, that you're kind of uh, looking up to or just admiring? Yeah, I mean, I know some people, you know, they may say, you know, uh, a coach or someone like that. But I I guess I'm a little bit odd in a way, but it's really close to home for me. And that's my wife, which may sound really odd. But, um, you know, if anybody has met my wife, um, one, she's drop dead gorgeous. Okay. (laughs) But um, just the person that she is and her actions, um, I mean, she would be the first one to, you know, give you that last shirt on her back. Um, she's always constantly the most giving person that I know in this entire world to the point where she gets sick of, you know, either making dinners for people or hosting people. Um, but at the same time, as mu- as loving as she in, is, she'll get in your face and, and, <laughs> and tell you like it is. Yeah. Be like, Rob, you're totally bullshitting. What, what do you, what do you, what are you saying? Take responsibility for what you're doing. You know? <laughs> So she really keeps me honest, and the way she lives her life, um, that's really one of my my heroes at this time, you know? Nice. And so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to live with someone and, and wake up with that person every single day. Nice. Well, otherwise, you'd be going surfing every day, and, you know, you'd be off track. You wouldn't hear yeah, from her. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the loving part of her. She, she actually allows me to surf almost every day with the boys, you know? So... You know, it, it's um, it's quite amazing um, Very cool. to be able to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I know you got the kids, but, uh, you know, who else are you trying to be a superhero to? And, you know, with your message and all that you're doing with uh, your speaking and your, your clients, et cetera, like who are you trying to be a superhero to? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, obviously for my kids and everything like that, but I, I think within um, uh, what I'm doing with uh, my business and with the industry and things of that sort, one thing that, um, that I try to be uh, more of a hero and just an example is to all the other fitness professionals coming up. Um, and, you know, we have all been through it where, you know, we're working 12, 14 hour days of working with, you know, 12 clients, 14 clients a day. And more and more, um, I'm consulting with a lot of the fitness professionals in the industry where, you know, we should be examples of health and vitality and, you know, be stronger or whatever we're trying to, um, to, 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 uh, uh, achieve as well as, uh, being example of, and a lot of fitness professionals are just surviving. Um, you know, they're tired all the time. They can't sleep. They got digestive issues. Um, and they're just struggling to the day. Obviously they're going to the grind, which you have to do. Um, but I'm really trying to be an example to those people and, and also to help them so that they can be a model of health and vitality and, and, and fitness and be a fit person so that they can um, really be an example to the clients but also do well in life as well because, you know, they may achieve all this success but then they're just tired all the time. They, they can't enjoy their success and what they're doing. You know what's funny is I've been taking a lot of – I sold my gym in December. So what's really interesting is um, I lost – from January 1, I've lost like uh, 20, 20 pounds. I'm at, I'm 50. I turned 50 in March. I'm at 13 and a half body fat percentage, which is really good for somebody at 50. Um, mm-hmm. And my joke right now is I sold, I had to sell my gym to get in shape, um, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And so it's, it's an interesting kind of, conundrum that we have that we kind of we're in this business to help and you know what's funny too is i'm taking some coaching like from not from fitness people from a couple of uh you know online a copywriter etc and uh, like high level coaching programs and everybody always talks about like these guys they're not in that great a shape they're in okay shape like health wise they're in great shape but they're not in like people like you know you or don or whatever so what they're what they all they talk about is taking care of your body first 
And right. exactly what you just said, too, because, you know, we were going through the motions here and a lot of us end up out of shape because almost maybe like we're tired of being in the gym or we work too much during the day. We want to get out. What do you feel like when you're kind of helping people with that? Like, have you seen this more and more? And how are you what are you doing to try to help them? Yeah, I, I'm seeing it more and more, and I'm getting contacted by more and more fitness professionals needing help because at, at one point they're like, you know, the the five trips to Starbucks is not giving me enough energy to yeah. train my clients. And um, so what I try to do is, I mean, I guess you can say, I mean, I'm, I'm consulting them and in, in working on their nutrition, their lifestyle, and maybe some supplementation and doing some testing with them, but... Um, in the long run, what I'm also trying to do is I'm also trying to open their eyes to the big picture of, uh, you know, they came in the industry wanting to do well and, and, and succeed. Um, but at the same time, uh, that success is also kind of is their demise of, of their health going downhill. Mm -hmm. So I say at one point, you've got to realize that you've got to um, start to think about what you do for yourself. Um, and, and start, start to prioritize. And so it'll be simple examples of just get your schedule under control. Um, because I, I, I did it. I mean, I saw 12 clients, you know, yeah. a, a day, you know, like eight in a row, then you take an hour break and, and you know, you don't, you just basically running from person to person, shoving your face of, with a bar or food. And, and, um, eventually it wears on you to the point where you're like, oh, I mean, burnout, right? You don't want to do it anymore. Or you're over it. You know, I'm, I'm over it, Rob, yeah. I'm just over it. And, and then it gets to the point where it wasn't a, it's not a love anymore, but it's, oh, man, I, I have to do this rather than I want to do this. And so I go into things like the, 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 um, their scheduling, simple things like that. Um, and, and getting to the point of what they really want to do and, um, and try to give them some direction as to how to achieve that. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it's important. It's funny. It's an it's a way we can keep more fitness professionals in the industry too. So, love it. All right, now it's time for the stop and give me five segment, Rob. You ready for uh for these five questions? I'm ready. All right. I'll give you an easy one to start. Nutrition book one. You can only pick one. Everyone should read. Oh, man. <laughs> Gosh, that's a tough one. Um, well, I would say it would be my book if it was out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not done, so I got to get on, get on that. Um, but no, I would say probably for me, um, it would be uh, Amino Acids for the Athlete by Moral Di Pasquale. Um, he was he's a medical doctor, um, and uh, it's just it's one of the ones that just sticks out in my mind because there's so much discrepancy as regards to protein, and this book was written years ago. And so um, I think it really gives a good idea of the importance of, uh, of protein intake. Just kind of the one that comes right off the top of my head. I mean, there's that's a really hard question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I figured that's why I asked him. Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> Rob, scariest surfing moment? Oh, man. Well, as you guys all know, I mean, right now, I mean, just in this last couple months in, in, uh, in May, April, May, we've had, I mean, at least... 30 plus sightings of white sharks here and so for me it was actually last week where um i took the boys surfing and um there's this one spot seaside reef and there's a couple different spots where you can sit and and all the kids started coming out we call them groms and so i'm like okay i'm over this i paddled out to the outside just to wait for a big big wave to come through and i was out there with one guy and he, he took a wave in i just sat there and and for some reason the water was really dark it was like black and I just sat there, and then <laughs> for some reason, all of these different thoughts came in my head. It wasn't as if I saw a shark, it was just the thought of it, yeah. right? And then so I'm like, okay, pick up my feet, pick up my hands. And then, you know, it was just that thought that it was a, a pretty scary moment, um, just of the possibility of it um, being attacked by a shark. But yeah. yeah. Imagine I'm going surfing tomorrow, I've never done it. Give me uh, three quick tips, best surfing advice. All right. First, first tip is you have the right equipment. So you have to be warm. Don't let anybody take you and you know just trunks and, and being cold. Two is you got to pick the right conditions. So, so many people I, I are taken out in these um, 
really rough conditions, which makes it really, really difficult. Um, so it has to be nice and smooth. Um, and then the third thing is um, just lie on the board on the beach and get acquainted with lying on the board and also popping up on the board. Yep. Um, because just doing it on the, on the beach is a challenge enough. So imagine going out in the water and doing it. So those would be the three things I would tell someone who wants to surf. Nice. And be careful of sharks. Um, <laughs> Rob, you can sit down. You can have an Evian with anyone from the past. Who's that person going to be? John Wooden. Nice. Love it. Um, I, yeah. You can be in any movie. What is it? <laughs> any movie. Uh, I I'm tend to be an action adventure kind of guy with movies so i'd have to say um it fast and furious all right i, I was waiting for point break <laughs> no no it, it, for some reason i i do have an infatuation with cars although i just drive a you know a truck because i have lug around all kinds of kids and surfboards but um but i do have an infatuation with um speed and cars <laughs> nice all right what's uh you what are you i know this answer but what are, what project are you working on that's getting you really excited Oh yeah. Um, well, we've talked about it a number of times. Uh, it's a uh, it's a book that I'm in the process of finishing in the final edit, and um, the title is Hole in One Nutrition. So um, it's obviously geared towards golfers and how they should eat on a daily basis, and then everything from what they should be eating before they play, during, um, you know, hydration, uh, supplementation. So I'm really excited because uh, it's been a project that I've been working on for a long time, but um, it's, uh, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> nice. Good. All right. Uh, 30 seconds. What's that letter to your younger self? What advice are you giving young Rob? Uh, my advice? Uh, well, maybe one thing I would say is that uh, I think growing up uh, making mistakes, I would be really hard on myself, but um, as we all know, uh, making mistakes is how you learn. So I think I would just say, hey, you know, learn from your mistakes and then you won't make them again <laughs> there you go nice all right well rob thanks so much always love uh getting you on uh any of my podcasts because you always have such great advice and really looking forward to your book coming out so thanks so much for coming on and doing this hey thanks anthony uh always appreciate the time man all right well that's gonna do it for episode 40 of the stop and give me 20 podcast thanks again to robert yang make sure to check out all the links to all his stuff at stop 20 podcast.com please subscribe to the show leave us a review and a rating my name is anthony renna thanks so much for stopping by